Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Mark from Woodworker Source, and the question today is, how do they take a tree, turn it into a log, and turn that into lumber that you can buy? You ever seen it before? It might be kind of a mystery. You might be wondering, how does it all happen? What does the machinery look like? What does the process look like? Is it fast? Is it slow? Is it hard? Is it easy? All that stuff. So I got an idea. Road trip. Let's go check this out. I'm gonna take you to three sawmills and show you how these guys do it. Okay, so first stop is this place. Now compared to some, it's just pint size, but in many ways, it's cozy and charming and just what you would expect from a small town rural sawmill. So this one in particular runs a circular saw type mill and it can crank out about a truckload of lumber in one day. Here's the overview to the whole process. It starts with landowners, and those landowners have trees, or they've got a lot of trees. And in one way or another, those trees get harvested into nice branch-free logs. But there's actually a science to the sustainability of the entire process called silviculture. In short, it's the practice of controlling the harvest of timber to keep the forest regenerating, staying healthy, so they'll be around for the long haul. It's a longer process than I make it sound, too. There's a lot of studying that goes into figuring out how to harvest a stand of timber, but also why and when to do it, and of course, whether or not the economics of doing so can even work out. For example, you could be a landowner with a stand of trees, but those trees might be difficult to get to, and therefore putting the machinery in place to extract those out and turn them into logs just might not make any sense to do so. It just might not have the economics to it. Or those trees could just be poorly shaped, that they wouldn't yield any good lumber, and therefore they're not worth anything. So. There's all this studying has to take place. Back to sawing logs, here's how that works. Hardwood logs usually get debarked first, usually. A debarker is like this big spinning brush that works its way across a log as it spins, just like you're eating corn on the cob. Now that usually takes place on a piece of machine that's just outside the sawmill, and then it gets transported in, and then they're ready to be sawn up. So the sawyer sits on his throne inside of a control cab where he's got all these controls for manipulating the log and feeding the saw. This saw in particular has four blades on it, it's got the big main one that's the, basically the star of the show that slices off boards. And then it's got one right above it and that helps out on parts of the log that are just too big or too large for that first blade to cut all the way through. So logs are really more cone shaped than they are perfect cylinders, right? Picture a tree. They get a little more flared down where they meet the ground and then they travel up and they get skinnier and skinnier as they go up. That upper blade is cutting through that flared or fatter part of the log that the main blade can't get through. Then these two horizontal blades are what's called the edger. Check this out. So he rolls a log down into this carriage, positions it where he wants it, and then he just starts slicing away. This laser is showing the sawyer where that edger blade is going to hit. And there are actually two lasers, one for both edger blades, but during this shot he's actually lining up one blade. But he can adjust those blades up and down independently, and that way he can saw boards off the log so they're as wide as possible with square edges on both sides. All that takes place with one pass through the saw. It's pretty cool.
Okay, next stop. This mill is a little more advanced, but the basics are the same. But the first thing you're gonna notice is that instead of a big circular saw blade, this is really a giant bandsaw. And the edger in this mill is a separate machine immediately after the saw. The boards come off the saw, they hit a conveyor, and this guy sends each board through the edger. The boards then get passed down the line to a grater, and this guy marks each board with the grade. And then they're passed through an end trimmer to make the ends nice and tiny. Now, you want to see some live edge slabs? This place is so cool. Let's check this out. Eventually lumber that's sawn at a sawmill makes its way over to a concentration yard or a lumber producer. They take green lumber and they do a bunch of work to it in order to make it suitable for sale and to make it suitable for use in projects. <laughs> so green lumber, what does that mean? That's the term that's used for lumber that's freshly sawn from a log. That means it's still wet. Believe it or not, logs have a high percentage of water in there and that water has got to get out in order for that lumber to be useful. Green lumber is a lot like other fresh things like milk, fruits, vegetables. If they're not cared for properly, they'll go bad. So if green lumber is stacked face to face like this at the sawmill, it actually needs to be restacked with proper drying sticks in between each layer. So that's the first step. If they don't do that quickly, the lumber's actually gonna stain. From there, they put out in the drying yard to await its turn in the kiln. So how long does lumber have to wait in the drying yard before going in the kiln? That's a good question. So it actually depends on the type of wood it is and the thickness. Some varieties can wait just a couple of weeks and others actually have to wait up to a year, maybe even more. It's just kind of depends on that configuration of what type of wood it is and how thick. The kiln is just a giant convection oven. It's got heat and it's got wind. Basically, a kiln provides a controlled environment where you can bring the moisture of lumber down to a stable percentage of like eight or 9%. And lumber kilns, they come in all different sizes. So at a place like Macbeth, you're talking 15 to 20,000 board feet per kiln. That's a lot of wood. So just like air drying, how long lumber has to sit inside of a kiln depends on the species of wood it is and the thickness, and then sometimes whatever nature wants to throw at you too. Now after lumber dries in the kiln, you gotta do some more processing. So this can be anything from regrading, or culling, or entrumming, that type of thing. And why is that? That's because when lumber dries out, it also shrinks. And when it shrinks, it can do all kinds of things like cupping, twisting, cracking, checking, all that stuff. It might look like this guy is just watching boards go by, but that's not the case. He's actually the grader, and he's doing some math right on the fly to determine the grade of the boards right as they flow by. So this giant green thing is called the sorter. For the most part, it's computer controlled to drop boards with certain characteristics into the same bin, and it can handle a lot of bins all at the same time. So for example, you could send a whole load of walnut into this thing, and it'll sort, say, 12,000 board feet of walnut. And you could choose one bin to just collect the boards that are eight inches or wider, or the boards that are just four to five inches wide, and that kind of thing. It's kind of a cool machine, can handle a lot of wood all at once. And they might look messy at first, but that's okay for the moment. These bundles move down the line where they're neatly stacked, and then they're strapped together and ultimately sent off to customers. So that's that. Thanks for watching. My name is Mark, I'm from Woodworker Source. We're a division of Macbeth Hardwood. Hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed it, and as usual, post your questions below, hit the subscribe button. Until next time, thanks.